With that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our speakers for today's presentation. We are joined by brand protection experts, Akino Chicada and Jack Johnson. Akino is a senior product marketing manager for the Mark Monitor Brand Protection Solutions. She started her career in public relations and marketing in London and has worked in Europe, Asia, and the United States. She has led and served interim roles in global marketing strategies, product marketing, events management, public relations, corporate communications, and regional marketing. Akino holds a Bachelor of Arts from the University College of London, a Master of Science from the London School of Economics, and has trilingual fluency in English, Italian, and Japanese. Jack is manager of the Mark Monitor Security Operations Center and has over 20 years of experience in the enterprise systems, engineering, and security space. He served eight years in the U.S. Navy as a cryptologist before making the transition to the civilian world where he joined Verizon Business Hosting. In his role as a senior systems engineer, he was responsible for administration and management of their global security information and event management system. He joined Mark Monitor in 2004 to help develop an online cyber crime detection and mitigation solution in the newly established Anti-Fraud Security Operations Center. Jack is a recognized subject matter expert in cybersecurity and enterprise level system administration and security best practices. He is currently working on multiple projects developing new and improved phishing and malware detection analysis and mitigation systems. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to Akino to get us started. Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's session. So as Gina said, today we'll be talking about the dark web. And we're gonna focus primarily on understanding why this channel matters to you as a business owner. Um, so this is our agenda. So we're gonna start off by talking about what is the dark web, then focus on why should you care, and then hone in on some use cases. Um, maybe many of you may know this, but Mark Monitor recently launched a dark web solution, and as part of that, we were able to share, we want to share many examples, real life examples and use cases of what we've been finding in the dark web. So hopefully you'll find that interesting. And then last but not least, we'll talk about how do you tackle the dark web problem. So with that, we're going to kick it off by clarifying terminology. So let's start with the surface web. The surface web are sites that are visible. So essentially what I mean by that is any keywords you type in a search engine, such as Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever those results come back is what we refer to as the surface web pages. As for the deep web, these are unindexed sites. Most of the content in the deep web is completely legitimate, and examples of content in the deep web include um, your internet portal, for example, um, sites that, like, for example, social media sites. Any sites, essentially, that has a username password, past that login page is what we would consider part of the deep web. And last but not least, the dark web. So the distinction here is that in order to access the dark web, you need a special software tool. So a commonly known software tool is Tor, also known as the Onion Router. There are also other tools such as I2P or Freenet. But essentially, by accessing these software tools and when done right, people are able to access the dark web anonymously. And so that's a key distinction here. And when you take a step back and think about it, there's a real need for access to the internet in a totally anonymous manner. So the dark web was actually built in the mid-1990s by the US Naval Research Laboratory. And the purpose was to protect intelligence and to be able to communicate. Um, today, there are many legitimate use cases. Journalists, whistleblowers, any privacy advocates, they all use Tor and access to the dark web to protect that identity. But when we flip the coin, it does unfortunately create an opportunity for criminals. 
the anonymity aspect is very appealing to cyber criminals because they're able to conduct their illegitimate activities um, with very low risk. And in fact, there's a recent study that shows that 57% of websites on Tor host illegal content. So, and that number keeps growing. So, for example, things that you might be able to purchase and find in the dark web does include drugs. You can also hire a hitman. You can also find really explicit content, so like hardcore pornography, that kind of information you can unfortunately also find in the dark web. But these are problems that are more at the government level and as I mentioned to you earlier today, we really wanted to focus on businesses and why businesses should care about it. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Jack who's gonna share a little bit about why should you care. Thank you, Akino. So let's talk about why you should care. We all live in an information age and everyone and everything has become interconnected and is becoming more so with each passing second. The amount of data being processed and stored has grown from gigabytes to terabytes, and now petabyte storage systems are becoming commonplace. Uh, for those of you less geeky than me, a petabyte is a one followed by 15 zeros. Combine this with the ever-increasing speed of our networking and communication channels. This means that information is being created, circulated, and able to be downloaded more rapidly than ever before. The old adage states, that knowledge is power, and in our information age, the value of information combined with the knowledge of how to use it is priceless. The only, li only limiting factors are the skill sets and imagination of those who are able to access the information. The sky is the limit of how information and sensitive data can be purposed. This is why it's absolutely essential to know what information about your organization has been disclosed, is being circulated, and the conversations that pertain to you and your organization in the dark web channels. When it comes to the seriousness of the types of information we've discovered being circulated and traded on the dark web, ignorance is not bliss, not at all. Each year's cyber attacks continue to eclipse the previous year, both in volumes and the tactics being used by cyber criminals. The number of attacks continue to rise, the variations of the attack continue to develop, introducing newer and more sophisticated attacks, and the finesse with which cyber criminals are able to social engineer their victims is unlike anything we've seen before. The results are that it's reported that cyber attacks cost businesses as much as $400 billion a year. 90% of those businesses suffer from some form of a security breach while only 60% of brands will be able to discover when and how they were breached. And the reality is that 75% of breaches go undiscovered for weeks or months. Cybersecurity experts who specialize in breach investigations and mediation speculate that an organization has most likely been breached, penetrated, or completely infiltrated one to two years before the cyber criminals migrate from a strategic to a tact tactical plan of action and strike. The impact to your brand is enormous. The success of these next level breaches can have a severe impact to your brand's reputation and bottom line. Breaches make big headlines and the media feeding frenzy is in full swing. Each breach being reported seems to get bigger and bigger. With each report, you hear 100 million user accounts, 400 million user accounts, it's becoming common language. I attended a recent cybersecurity event where one of the questions give, given to the audience was, what was the total number of accounts compromised in a recent breach that made the headlines? The answer was 80 million user accounts. And after the answer was given to the audience, the, the audience seemed disappointed. I guess 80 million user accounts isn't what it used to be. Companies have invested enormous amounts of time, strategy, and other resources to attract and gain the trust of consumers, only to have it all threatened due to a breach. Now let's move into some use cases. Now we've spoken about the impacts of cyber attacks and their potential impacts to your brand and why it is important to monitor the dark web to identify impending threats 
to your brand and organization, we'll take a deeper dive into some use cases based on actual experiences that we've encountered this year. We all agree that information has value and the more sensitive, relevant, and actionable the data only increases the value. Proactively monitoring dark web communications channels pertaining to your brand provides real-time alerting to your organization's security operations team about potential threats, giving them a heads up and time to preemptively take actions to defend against existing and planned attacks. Real-time alerting provides information about upcoming attacks in the planning stages that threat actors are actively communicating about, identify and resolve existing data breaches by pin pinpointing the source of the leak, identify and remediate accounts associated with stolen credentials, reducing the risk of a, an account takeover, detect leaked intellectual property, as well as minimizing collateral damage that can be caused by a data breach of a third party. Additionally, Tools, tactics, and techniques being utilized and developed by cyber criminals are discussed and circulated on the dark web. This type of intelligence is critical for developing a strong cyber defense posture. Here's a perfect example of, an, of the effectiveness of real-time alerting in action. Cyber criminals were detected actively engaging in the coordination of a physical attack against a bank in Mexico. The attackers conspired to plant and ignite an incendiary device on the bank's premises, causing panic and a definite disruption to the bank's operation. The communications began initially in the dark web and eventually bubbled up to the surface web on social media. By proactively monitoring the cyber criminals chatter in the dark web communications channel, a real-time alert was sent to the bank, providing them with enough time to contact law enforcement and increase their physical security presence in preparation. This, the result was that the disruption to the bank's operation was minimized and the incident was contained. Internet relay chat, better known as IRC channels, are still a popular and widely used communication channel used by cyber criminals. These private channels provide cyber criminals with a platform where they can share information and coordinate attacks in real time with the belief that they are in a secure environment. In this example, the cyber criminals have coordinated a distributed denial of service or DDoS attack against an organization. The communication chatter being displayed shows how they are sharing the target IP addresses and accessing the effectiveness of their attacks. Multiple cyber criminals are were involved in the distributed attack and using their combined resources to take the organization offline. However, the proactive monitoring of the dark web IRC channel provided the targeted organization with a real-time alert and they were able to quickly put their DDoS mitigation plan into action. The attackers who initially were successful in degrading the online performance of the targeted organization became frustrated in the end and had no clue as to why their intended target was able to stay online in the midst of their DDoS attack. One of the attackers even attributed the failure to a compl complication with their own VPN connection. In this example, a cyber criminal was able to obtain a list of email addresses with their associated passwords. This is cyber gold. The cyber criminal then shared the full list of email addresses and password pairs in a closed forum on the dark web. Our system, which was monitoring the forum for our client's brand, detected that one of the client's employees' email addresses and password pair was disclosed in the list. An alert was sent to the client, who then was able to avert any further potential threat from the leak credentials by putting their password security reset policy into place scan their network for suspicious activities, and review their log files for any unauthorized access attempts or repeated login failures after the passwords were reset. Here's another example of how the cyber world can have a direct impact on the physical world. A cyber criminal was able to obtain the credentials required to gain administrator level access to the control systems being used by three thermal power plants located in India. The cyber criminal then posted an ad in a dark web forum 
offering the credentials for sale, requesting that the payment be made in Bitcoin. Additionally, the cyber criminals stated that they would provide a full stock inventory list, remote management functionality, and $8 million in transactional history for the power plants. This type of breach of critical infrastructure could have dire consequences, ranging from a ransom demand to an intentional cause of a total system failure resulting in an explosion. It has become commonplace for engineers and software developers to reach out for help and share tips and tricks on software development forums. However, the risk for unintentional disclosure of both intellectual property and login credentials are very high if the submitters are not aware of the need to redact proprietary and sensitive information such as database IDs, IP addresses, and account names. These artifacts of information can be used by cyber criminals to enumerate an organization's network and plan an attack. In the case of disclosing account names and login credentials, the result will be an immediate breach. The proactive dark web monitoring service registered a hit for the client and a real-time alert was generated and the client was alerted that a snippet of proprietary code is, was being shared. The company was able to remediate this disclosure and realizing that engineers often require the online community's collective knowledge to solve problems, conducted internal training for their engineering staff on how to properly redact code when posting to forums. As the world can continually becomes more interconnected, the threat of damage from a third-party affiliate is a constant danger and must be defended against. In this example, a cyber criminal who specialized in targeting regional healthcare clinics was able to steal large patient databases containing 9 to 20 million records and offered them for sale in a dark web forum and, of course, requested the payment be made in Bitcoin. Although our client was not the direct target, Regulatory requirements such as HIPAA require that patient personal identifi identifiable information, or PII, be secure and protected from unauthorized access. Also, understanding the cyber criminal's method of operation provided critical cyber intelligence that the client security team used to adjust their security protocol calls for dealing with third parties accordingly. Let's take a minute to discuss the power of sharing information online. Cyber criminals are successful largely due to the fact that they belong to a very active community who readily and openly shares information with each other. This allows cyber criminals with varying degrees of skills to engage in cybercrime. In this specific use case, a hacker had identified vulnerabilities in a company's system. The hacker then created a how to hack tutorial which provided the exact details of the vulnerability and the steps necessary to breach the system. Our proactive dark web monitoring solution detected the posting of the how-to tutorial, sent a real-time alert to the client who, having been made aware, worked with their engineering staff to validate that the threat was real and quickly patched the systems involved. This type of proactive monitoring and mitigation is key to preventing future hacks from cyber criminals who gain access to the how-to guide. Thanks, Jack. Um, so I personally find all of these use cases very, very important, like interesting and relevant to businesses. And so this actually begs the question, and we'll be shifting gears a little, but the next obvious question is, how do we tackle this problem when it comes to the dark web? And one obvious question springs to mind. If it's all anonymous, then how do you take action and how do you enforce? And I think in all of Jack's examples that he walked us through, there was one common theme. And the common theme was the visibility aspect, having visibility enables companies and business brand owners to actually know what's going on and being able to take that information and take action from that. So the key here is really having visibility 
so that you can actually take action and reduce the amount of potential damage it could cost your business. And in terms of what you should do, well, we highly recommend a comprehensive approach. Um, so for starters, security teams need to consider vulnerabilities from all angles. And what I mean by that is we shouldn't just focus on employee protection, but rather also pay attention to clients and also partners, any vendors out there. Essentially, when we think about security measures and how we protect the brand, it should truly be from every potential aspect, anyone who's working with your business or related to your business. Those are the people that we need to think about. The second thing is an end-to-end -end brand protection strategy that is cross-functional. So because it does, and all these different attacks and the use cases Jack walked us through, actually impacts our business in multiple, multiple different ways and actually impacts departments in different ways, having a cross-functional team that approaches this is very, very important. Third, the visibility aspect. It's important to look and have visibility beyond just the surface web page level. Being able to have visibility across all channels, including dark web and deep web, is extremely important. Last but not least, taking action immediately. The quicker you can take action, the faster and the less expensive it's gonna to be to your business because as we all know, especially some of the stats that Jack showed us in the beginning, where 75% of the companies don't even realize a breach is happening, then that impact is tremendous. We don't realize until way later and until it hurts the business how expensive one of these attacks and their breaches can be. So with that, I do not want to spend too much time on this, but I definitely wanted to address it because we've been getting a lot of questions on it, um, is what our product is. So we recently launched the Mark Monitor Dark Web and Cyber Intelligence solution. And really there's three things that I wanted to highlight, especially if you're considering technology aspect to monitoring your deep web, dark web, then these are the three things that I highlight. First, it's really important to have visibility across the entire internet. So with our product, you're able to look at the deep web, dark web, the various threat actor groups in social networks, including Twitter, Facebook, the Russian social media site, VK, and the Chinese site, um, Weibo, and IRC Chess. So having Visibility is extremely important. The second aspect is near real-time alerts so that you're able to take action from the intelligence you gather. So as mentioned before, the quicker you can take action, you can minimize damage that's gonna to cost to your business. And then the third aspect is having smart technology to infiltrate efficiently these cyber criminal networks. Now, there are companies out there that are trying to do this manually, but the reality is the manual approach is actually more, more expensive and not as efficient. So having smart technology, smart robots that are actually infiltrating by mimicking human behavior is actually a very effective way and something for you to consider. And I want to wrap this up and get to Q&A session soon, but I definitely want to leave you with a few thoughts and a few key questions that you should consider when you're building your brand protection program. So first of all, how are you currently protecting your consumers from brand and fraud abuse? So when you're putting together your security and brand protection program, like I mentioned before, beyond just looking at your employees, it's really important to think about every other person that is working or related to you because they're all part of the vulnerability aspect. 
The second is, is your security and brand protection program giving you the visibility you need? So are you looking beyond the surface web page level? Are you looking at the deep web and dark web? Because there's, as Jack showed us, I think that there's a lot of value and tremendous impact that you could get. Um, the third is, do you have the right protocols and enforcement strategies in place so that you're able to take appropriate action? Um, depending on the abuse and the intelligence you're getting, it's really important to modify your enforcement or how you take action. So one thing that stood out for me personally as Jack was going through the different case studies or use cases was the fact that intelligence and the different actions that are taking place actually comes with different levels of threat. So something like a planned physical attack, especially if you could detect it before the attack happens, has it's actually very clear what actions you take. You could, you could immediately call law enforcement and make sure that you have up your security measures in place so that for that time and date, you already have a planned approach in how you're going to minimize that damage versus something that's more about proprietary information or your intellectual property being leaked, such as the engineering example. Your enforcement or how you're going to take appropriate response could be something like actually doing the best internal best practices class. You could do an internal training to all your employees. How do you handle questions when you don't necessarily know the answers to? So you could use that intelligence to harness and focus on best practices, internal best practices as well. And then the last piece is, do you have the right resources in place? I know I talked about this earlier, but being able to have a cross-functional team and being able to take this intelligence and apply it in a cross-functional way where all your departments are leveraging and seeing the different activities are taking place can really help you come up with a really comprehensive end-to-end -end brand protection program. So pulling together and working together with IT security folks, risk management teams, brand protection teams, legal department, marketing, customer service, it's really important. And now I see questions coming in, so I am going to start going through them. Please. As Gina mentioned in the beginning, feel free to ask as many questions. Continue to type it in the Q&A box, and we'll go through them right now. So, Jack, first question for you. What are the different channels you monitor? I guess this refers to our Mark Monitor, Dark Web, and Cyber Intelligence tool. So that's a good question. So the social, uh, the channels we monitor are social networks, uh, the popular ones, Facebook, Twitter, Viki, Weibo, IRC and web chats, uh, data, data dump, uh, pastebin sites, drop zones, uh, deep web, which is, you know, unindexed data, such as you mentioned earlier, and the dark web uh, that we use anonymizer software to access. So pretty much wherever they're talking, sharing information, posting, we're, we're there. And if we're not there, we're trying to get there. Great. Um, another question. Is it possible to take identifying information in the dark web, such as username, handles, storefront names, etc., and use those to try and correlate to the same on the surface web? That, that's a, a great question, and actually, it, it's very possible in many instances. Um, Internet people in general, hackers, they, they choose a handle, mm -hmm. and they, they normally like their handle. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They initially did not start off as cyber criminals and, and hackers, and they used that handle and the email addresses associated with it in the past online for legitimate purposes. Since we have very good historical Internet information, such as postings, blogs, 
emails, uh, social media accounts, et cetera, it's often very uh, useful to uh, browse the surface web and see what we can find to correlate uh, dark web threat actors to their uh, li real personas online, or at least their real uh, internet personas online. If you don't get their actual name, it can give you clues to who they are and where they're operating out of. Excellent. Another question for you. Are robots able to successfully penetrate closed forums and retrieve valuable information? Yes, the, the smart robot technology creates online avatars who mimic human behavior. And through the mimicking of human behavior and communication patterns, they can gain admittance to closed cyber criminal forums. Also, we do allow human interactions in parallel to bot interactions when needed. So the, the bots com combined with human intelligence, it, it's very convincing and effective in infiltrating these closed networks and groups. Awesome. And I, um, another question, how often do we find examples before an attack happens? It, it varies from case to case. And the examples that we gave, those were best case scenarios. However, it's all about the interaction and partnership with our clients to understand their threat footprint and give us the proper keywords and sensitive areas to monitor. It, it can be very effective, especially when you combine dark web communication channels with social media, because we all know that hackers prior to or post close to the point, they will broadcast on Twitter, et cetera. So by combining, you know, monitoring both of those channels, we're, we're very good at detecting uh, attacks before they happen. Great. Another great question here. Are you monitoring Chinese and Russian languages sites, forums, et cetera? Yes, we are. Our robot technology is language agnostic. So it's not bound by, you know, I, I speak English and I understand a little Spanish. However, the, the bots, they don't have that limitation. They can uh, read and respond in any language that there's uh, technology that can translate for. I'm loving it. We're getting more great questions. Um, another question, how can you use dark web penetration techniques with honeypots? Well, I'm not sure that dark web penetration techniques and honeypots go together because we would not want our dark web robots to encounter a honeypot because that would mean that the cyber criminals trapped us into divulging our technology. Um, if, if you mean the inverse of how could we use dark web, knowledge from the dark web to lure threat actors into honeypots, that, that's very possible. And there's various means to see uh, information into threat actors. You know, you can feed them uh, legitimate credentials so that they can access it and we can monitor where they're accessing it from and how often they access it and what time they access it. Um, that, that's very useful. Um, you know, you're, we're only limited by our imagination and our clients, our clients' willingness to move forward with those type of activities. Okay. Another question came in. What type of indicators are you monitoring for? Just brand names and terms, or can you go beyond these indicators? And if so, how? So we can monitor for any indicators that our clients provide us that they believe is, is, is sensitive. So we mentioned brand names and terms, but there's also IP addresses and network ranges, because in the case of breaches or, or the DDoS attack, this is the language of what the cyber criminals speak in. Um, there's really no limitation. Okay. Um, let's see, I think we have one more question. Um, but please, in the meantime, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to type it in right now. Um, one of the question is, do you look beyond TOR, or are we just looking at TOR? We're, we're well above and beyond TOR. TOR is just one method of, uh, you know, anonymizing one's identity. There, there's many uh, VPNs and P2P protocols that are being used, like I mentioned, IRC, 
uh, forums, uh, the major social media outlets, our, 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 our you know, reach is broad. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. Um, if there are no other questions, please note um, we'll be more than happy to answer any further questions. Please feel free to reach out to us. Um, as you can see on the screen, there's an email address, telephone number, and Gina will be sending out an email uh, email shortly. Yeah, Follow thank up. you, Jack. Thank you, Kino. Um, thanks for such a great presentation. I'd also like to thank everybody uh, tuning in for your participation. Uh, as the keynote said, uh, we'll be sending, up a follow sending out a follow-up email with a link to the webinar's presentation slides and a recording within the next couple of days, so you can be on the lookout for that email. Uh, that concludes our webinar for today. Thanks again for